Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can create a soccer band game in Chitvalu. So at some point, you must have heard or played the game soccer band. Just in case you haven't, here's a video of it. It basically involves you as you controlling the player to move these boxes to their respective places. Now let's begin by taking a look at the object I have in my scene. The first object in my scene is the player object. The player is a sprite object which is this and is controlled by you. In my player I have a set of animations which includes the idle, walk right, walk up and walk down. I also have a loop set for the animation with the frames per second set to 6. A sprite object does not have any behavior as the vents will take care of this, so apply. The next object is the grass object. The grass object indicates where the player can move to. In my scene, I have the grass object placed in every square I want the player to walk on. There we go. The next object we have is the object variable up, the object variable down, the object variable left and object variable right. These are all text objects. They're used to store a reference to the blocks where the player can move to. Look at them as variables which can store objects and not just strings and numbers. The next object is the wall object. In our scene we have the wall objects placed around the game. The wall object sets a boundary for the game. The next object we have here is the crate object. It's the object to which the player has to get to this, which I call home. The crate does more than just being moved by the player. In the crate we have points which determine its movement. Here we can see up, down, right and left. So when the player sprite is inside this point, it moves the crate in the opposite direction. For example, if my player is in collision with this point, which is the right point, and our player presses A, it moves the box in the opposite direction. We'll see more on this in the event. And our last object is the home object. The home object is the player's target. He has to get the box, which is the crate, all the way to the home. Sukoban is a puzzle game, so in most stages, it would require complex thinking to get the crate to the home. For player to move, we need to make use of an action and a condition. The name of the action is the linked object, and the name of the condition is the raycast. So let's preview this to show you what I mean. Here I have some squares which have a higher opacity than the others. The squares width, the grasses which you can see display where the player can move to. Up, 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 and, and down. That's basically the ray cast in action. The ray cast shoots an invisible ray from our player origin point to detect the grasses at a specific angle it hits. In this case, it's making use of the right angle, which is at 0 degrees, down at 90 degrees, left at 180 degrees, and up at 270 degrees. Keep in mind that ray cast is created for each angle. The grasses detected by each raycast will be linked to each text object, which are this object we created here and used for the movement. Now let's write some events. In our events, the first thing you'd want to do is add a new event and then add a condition. At the beginning of the scene, we want to hide all the text objects. So add an action to hide. We're hiding this because we have the objects placed in the scene. So hide up, down, right, sorry, right and left. There you go. In a new event, you need to unlink all objects from this text object. So add a new event. What this would do is clear every frame before detecting the direction of movement. So add an action and unlink. Unlink all objects from an object. Select this and select a text object variable up. Okay. Copy, paste.
paste object variable down paste object variable side sorry right object variable left there you go the next part of the tutorial will be cast an array from our player x and y position towards the angle we want this angles include 0 degrees 90 degrees 180 degrees and 2 70 degrees so let's begin add a condition it's a ray cast so ray cast and the object it has the ray against would be grass the ray source x position this would be our player dot x and our player dot y So this would get this would set the race source to our player x position on our player y position. The next would be the ray angles. Since this ray would be targeted upwards, we want to set this to 270. The maximum ray distance in pixel would set this to the height of our grass. So set grass dot height. There you go. We'd leave our result x position and y position blank. You can make use of this if you want to start data in a variable. So set this to invert condition and OK. So the next thing you do is add an action. And the action we're about to add would link our grass and our object variable up. So let's search that up link, which is linked to objects. The first object would be grass and the second object would be object variable up. There you go. The next condition you'd add, still in the same event, is a collision condition to check if the player is in collision with the grass. So add a condition and we'll search for collision. There you go, collision. And the object would be grass. And the object is player. So it inverts this because we want the action to be executed when the player is not in collision with the grass so okay so we have the ray which would check for the grass upwards now we need to set a ray which would check for the grass downwards so let's add a new event i'll copy this copy and paste now let's change the values in here since we're going for an angle a downwards angle would we'll set this to 90 We'd leave our grass heights and against grass and leave this blank also. This would still remain the same. Now in our action link grass and the object variable, let's set the variable to down. There you go. Once again, paste. Now let's do for the right. For the right, cast a ray from play x, play y, angle of 0 and max distance grass heights px against grass and we'll leave this blank. Same for this. Now let's link grass and the object variable. Right. There you go. Now paste this again for the left, which is the last side. For this, we'd set the angle to 180. And into our actions, we'd link the grass and the object variable left. There you go. So with this event now, it should cast a ray from the player's x and y position to detect the grasses at this angles which we've set. The controls of our game would make use of WASD. So let's start with our D key. I'll add in multiple events. We can just do that here. And there you go. So right here, let's add a condition to check if a key is released. So key released, our key would be D. If D key is released, we need to take into account all grasses which are linked to our object variable right. So add an action and let's go with link, take account and the, so select the object grass and then select the variable which is object variable right. Hit OK and there you go. We also need to set a trigger one, so add a condition, trigger once, while true, and OK. Now into our action, we need to set the position of the player to be the grass X and the grass Y. So add an action, and the player position 
should be sine set to, to the grass x and this set to, to the grass y so this will set our player position to the grass to the x position of our grass and the y position of our grass now let's also set a condition to flip our player horizontally and also change the animation of our player so add an action and player flip horizontally we set this to no and then add an action to change the animation change the animation of player sign set to value one now we need to do the same for all sides so copy and paste once again once for this would go with the up key which is w so once w key is pressed take into account all grass linked to the object variable up so there you go and in our action change the position of this would set that true since this is up we don't need to flip our player horizontally so delete that and change the number of animation of players set this to two there you go so once again paste this let's go but this would go with a down key so it sets once s key is released take into account all grass linked to our object variable down trigger once and into our action we also don't need flipping horizontally so delete that and let's set the animation to three now for the last side paste which is a would set this to once a key is pressed take into account all grasses linked to our object variable which is the left trigger once and then change the position of play would set this and flip horizontally yes we need to flip our play horizontally since we are moving right and left so there you have it this should handle our player's movements let's preview this here you can see our character works properly which is what we want now we need to add in some events to move the crate so back into our events add a condition select player we need to get the point so point inside object the object would be crates which is the point i showed you earlier so crates points dot x and we'll start with the up point for the x and for the y okay so once we have that add a condition key pressed s okay add an action to change the y position of crate so crate position y position add 65 there you go okay so now let's copy this copy and paste paste and paste we made four copies of this now we'll modify it to work for each side of the crates so that's the up the next would be the down so crates points points name is down on the x and the points name is down on the y so here instead of adding would be subtracting from it so subtract 65 and the key pressed would be w the next would be the right side so you change the points name to right on the x and right on the y so you change the position instead of the y axis y position you said that's the x position leave that as um set this to subtract and set the key pressed in this case to be a that should work so now for the last part which is um create points x this would be left and this should be left on the y should be left so add 65 we already have that and the key pressed would be d so save this and let's preview so a player is moving the crates downwards and that's a problem um let's check our events Okay, so here's the problem. We need to set this to the X position and not the Y. So X position, okay, and let's launch another preview. 
So here you go, we are now pushing the box, our players pushing the crate, sorry. And yeah, there you go, that's how easy it is to create a soccer band game in Chitvalp 5. So if you like the tutorial, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Thanks for watching.